I, I do have two questions, but I'm not sure if I've got the energy for the first one. It's quite okay. late in the retreat. I'll, I'll start with question two, which is, is an easier one. Um, how can something, uh, how can consciousness, which has no qualities, manifest as uh, a universe with qualities like space and time? How can things manifest from the absence of anything? Uh, the answer is they can't and they don't. It's a very good question. You remember what I said yesterday, nothing exists, only being is. But in the Bhagavad Gita it says that which is never ceases to be, that which is not never comes into existence. In other words, things don't really exist, they appear to exist. Uh, I, don't, I don't just mean physical things, just how can existence seem to be? Because um, imagine uh, imagine an empty space devoid of all qualities and then imagine that empty space were to spontaneously shudder within itself and create some kind of vibration or movement that vibration or movement would have a form but how does the space which has no qualities do anything it's it it's like a a spontaneous movement of itself within itself imagine an ocean it's a, bit, a little bit easier to visualize than, than, than a than an empty space imagine a completely silent motionless ocean shuddering spontaneously with itself it would send a series of ripples through itself I just find it really hard to um, conceptualize spontaneity uh, of things spontaneously happening caused by nothing in nothing. Well, why, why do you feel that something must have a, a cause? I suppose it's just what I'm used to is cause and effect and I do find that really hard to let go of. Um, but at the same time, I do, um, I am comfortable with the concept of nothing existing, of space and time not being real in the way that we're used to thinking of them as real. But even so, I don't know how to differentiate the concept of consciousness, which has no qualities, and which is unmanif unmanifested as not either something or nothing. It's because you're starting, you're trying to use the finite mind to understand the infinite. And your finite mind is coming up against its own limitations. Mm -hmm. You're trying to bring the infinite within the compass of your own finite mind. You're trying to bring the, you're trying to understand the infinite within the limits of your finite mind. But the infinite doesn't fit into the finite mind. Okay. Uh, you, you, so um, for instance, you, you're, you're so, sorry to interrupt, yeah, your, your insistence that there must be causality from the perspective of the finite mind which seems to know time and space. Causality seems to be the, the obvious chain of, of, of events, but you are imposing that, that limitation on infinite consciousness and presu presuming that because causality seems to exist from the perspective of each of our finite minds, therefore it must also pertain to consciousness. 